tell you something. You can never meet God's time. Amen. I've been praying to God. I said, Lord, I need a male minister to help me with the men's ministry of the church. Uh-huh. And I've been praying to God for about six months. Uh-huh. Unbeknownst to many of you, there were people who were referred to me. I spoke to a few of them and I said, no, not this one. Uh-huh. No, not this one. Uh-huh. Look at what the Lord did today. Hallelujah. There are benefits of leaning on God. Yes. yes. And God's time is not always our time, and our time is not always God's time. Amen. But I'd rather take God's time any day. Yeah, yeah. Because I believe that God always knows what's best for me. Jesus. Amen. So we thank and praise God for all of you. I'm just so thankful to serve at this church. Mm. Because in spite of the challenges that we face, there's no better day than Sunday morning when I'm waking up to come to this Yes, yes, yes. There's a sense of joy and peace when I when I turn on Mayfield and I, I'm always excited to come to St. Stephen. And sometimes I don't want to leave it. I was the last person here yesterday. Uh-huh. And if I had a couch in that office, I probably would have t- taken a nap. Uh, I thought the floors would be a little too hard for me. And so I went on home. But I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve in this church. The Lord's name be praised. The book of Acts, the 16th chapter, and just two verses, verses 25 through 26.
depends on the longitude and the date. And bear with me, I'm going somewhere. In life, it can seem as though we are caught in the midnight of our circumstances. Midnight is often associated with darkness and loneliness. It is associated with isolation and a period of helplessness. Midnight is a time that our mind begins to play tricks on us. We feel like giving up. We feel like we are worthless. We, we watch family and friends suffer and we appear helpless. One of the things this past week, I was, as I was sitting and talking with Sister Harriet Barnes, she would tell me that during the day, Janice seemed okay, but at night, she could hear her mourning and groaning in her bedroom. Midnight has a way of ushering us to a place of agony and defeat and bringing us to a point of thinking that things are over. After all, in the pitch of midnight, it's often hard to see anything but darkness. I'm not talking about midnight with a, a, a hint of light, and I'm talking about midnight when it's pitch black, when it's dark, when you can't even yeah. see your hand in front of your face. I'm talking about midnight. I'm not talking about when you have a night light in the corner, but I'm talking about when it's dark. Think about it when it's dark in your room and everything is off. The blinds are closed and drinks are pulled together when it's pitch black dark. But well, let's translate that to life. Doesn't it seem like sometimes in our lives it's just dark? It's just pitch black? We don't see any hope. We don't see any light. It's just dark. We went to the doctor. The doctor gave us a prognosis, a diagnosis, and it just seems dark. You can't talk to anybody about it because you don't know how to deal with it. You can't discuss it with anybody because you're still trying to process it yourself. It is dark. I'm in the midnight of my life. Midnight often leads us to a point of throwing in the towel. Midnight. <laughs> my friends who know me very well know that I never speak in a completely dark place. Mm -hmm. There <laughs> always has to be some type of light. <laughs> I always need the television on. I just, uh -huh. I just have to have something around. Mm -hmm. I remember where, where I live in South Carolina. It's, it's very similar to this area. You go down a road and there's my grandmother's house, or her, her, her daughter's house, her son's house, another son's house, grandson's house. And, and so what we do, we cut off the property every time someone wants to build a house. Right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And all the mailboxes are lined up right beside the road. The road is named after my grandmother, so you know you're in the country when the road is named after somebody you know. <laughs> and so we go from house to house, and, and so Different ones would cook different things. And they'll, everybody would say, Grandma, what you cooking? And Grandma, I cook this. And then, so she would tell me to go and take this over to Bubba's house, and Lorena's going to bring you this to bring back. I said, Grandma, it's dark. She said, Well, I'll stand on the porch and I'll watch you come back. And I'll watch you come back. <laughs> because our minds have been taught since we were young. That nighttime is not a good time. That midnight is that that when it's dark, bad things happen. Huh? That, 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 that bad things begin to happen when it's dark outside. And, and you know, you better get home before the before the pole lights come on. There wasn't no street lights, we didn't have no streets, but it's a pole. The house on a dirt road. Thank God they're paying it now. But you better get home before the pole lights come on. Because bad things night. And so we've been a social, we've been programmed to think that bad things happen at night. And so here we are, midnight is a place where we put our best foot forward and nothing seems to work in our favor. We're still dealing with the conditioning that in our secular world, in the world 
that we live in, that we walk in, that things happen bad, that bad things happen at night. And so then when we go through the travails of life, we carry the same mentality over into our psyche and we begin to think that bad things happen in my life at midnight. I'm going through the midnight periods of my life. I'm, I'm going through some dark times and because my mind has been programmed to think that only bad things can happen in the midnights of my secular world, when things begin to happen in the midnights of my spiritual world, I can always process the end that since my midnight can turn into a midday in my spiritual world because God does not operate in the natural of God. don't want to be midnight is that place where our months our month supersedes our money our struggle supersede our strength our mountains supersede our minds and our problems supersede our problems midnight but I'm here to serve notice on the devil that your midnight can become your midday midday is the place of refreshing hear me hear me hear me Midday represents the turning point of your past. Huh? Oh, it's only one second between midnight and midday. Oh, it's only one second before they talk about 1159 and 1201. It's only, it's only one second getting in there before the breaking of the day, before things can get better. But the reality of it is that many of us tend to end up on the midnight side and don't live to see through the midday because we can't believe that God Uh, midday, we go and we take our lunch breaks. Some people run out to the store, buy things. When I work downtown in Social Security on Green Street, co-workers who did public transportation would go to Lexington Market at lunch break and tell the man to put all the ice on the meat. And they come back to their desk. That's the first time I saw that. And they come back to the desk and got turkey wings and chicken to ice there. Uh -huh. You're not afraid that's going to go bad? They said, no, we told the man to put extra ice. We already have way through the day. We go bad now. I should have bought them in the first place. <laughs> said, All right, well, okay. But midday is a time where you can regroup. You can start over. You can refresh. You can, you can put your best foot forward. Midday represents the turning point of your past. Midday is a place where we break from the heat of the day to regroup and re-energize our efforts to move past the problems of the past and move beyond the burdens of brokenness. Yes. Yes. Midday is a place where marriages are restored, hearts are mended, relationships are restored, shackles are, are released, uh, the release of restraints and, and the benefits of bountiful blessings. Midday represents the reality of now and the past of yesterday. But the irony of it all is that many of us seem to give up on midday and conform to the realities of midnight. But you have to hold on to the belief that your midday will come. And I know we live in a world of uncertainty, but the only certainty is that God will never leave you nor forsake you. On last Tuesday, for many it seems like what would be our midday turned into midnight. And for some it seems like their midnights turned into their middays. And with the election of Donald Trump, many of whom thought would lose the election, it seemed like midnight at one point, but in an instant it became apparent that it was becoming midday. And for Hillary Clinton supporters, what seemed like midday became increasingly evident that it was becoming midnight. Oh, bless his holy name. How do you know that sometimes midnights come out of the middle of nowhere? It just hits us and we're going down the roads of life and the sun is shining. We're in the middle of the day. We just got a fresh tank of gas, a, a brand new haircut, just left the mall for shopping. We got groceries in our trunks and then in the midst of it all, Midnight. Mm. Mm. Something 
And then look what they do to Paul and Silas. They put them in jail. But let's look what they did. I they didn't get upset. They didn't go and say, Lord, let me get my turns. But they began to one begin to pray. And one began to sing. One began to sing. And one began to pray. One began to pray. And one began to sing. One began to sing. And one began to pray. One began to pray. And one began to sing. One began to sing. And one began to pray. Do I have any witnesses in here? One began to pray, and one began to sing, one began to sing, and one began to pray, one began to pray, one began to sing, one began to sing, and one began to pray. And I said, the prisoners, they started listening, they said, what is all that ruckus? What's going over there? What's happening in that jail cell? Because 
because they were already gone back home. So you just cut off all of our money. So we're going to put you in jail. Huh? Because they thought it was the way to shut them up. But Paul and Silas went in jail. And they kept praying. And they kept singing. They kept singing. And they kept praying. See, the same Holy Ghost that brought them to the point of delivering this young lady was not one that they were going to throw away because I'm in trouble. As a matter of fact, I'm going to run closer to Jesus. And so here we are at midnight. Oh, come on, stand all over this place. At midnight. Church home. 